Morning news on Fox 14 right now at 7 with the November general election nearing a look at the rules regarding election nearing at the polls. Also, the Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce hopes a statewide program will bring more residents to the area. And we've got cloudy skies to start the day. They'll be gradually clearing across the area, letting some of you be a little warmer than your neighbors. We'll have a look at that forecast, get you out the door. Coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 o'clock on this Friday, the 13th. There we are. Ooh, spooky. Uh, spooky day. I could know. be or it could be fantastic. Yes. It's already fantastic because I, I don't know if you caught it or you folks at mm -hmm. home caught it. Abby. Our producer, I, my hat is off to you. I don't even know if you intended to do it or if it was a lack of coffee, but in that, that first story, sure. it said with the election nearing, we're going to talk about Ooh. electioneering. A play on words. That there, was that bit. was fantastic. I caught it that. right after. I was like, I was that was that was. I great. didn't even notice it. See, I there I loved go. it. I thought that was fantastic. And uh, <laughs> some folks in Kansas would like for you to come home. Right. Yes. If you or someone you know moved away from Kansas, specifically Pittsburgh, city leaders say it's time to return home. As KOM's Lottie Walton reports, the city is growing, and they hope to have people who have lived there help it continue to grow. I was born and raised in this area, I left and went to Missouri, thought I just had to flee Kansas and get away, you know, and uh, go on to bigger and better things. Director of Community Development of Housing, Kim Froman, says she started her career in a big city with all the shiny lights, but it wasn't like Pittsburgh. She added miles to her vehicle just to get a taste of home. We were tearing up the highway, coming back and forth to see family, uh, 45 minute to an hour commutes, corporate life, traffic. Hopefully, many others, just like Froman, wants to come back and stay. That's why Kansas launched a program called Love Kansas, to encourage others in the community to come back home. So it's a partnership between the university, the city, and the Chamber of Commerce um, to encourage people to move back to Kansas, but to also Pittsburgh. This Love Kansas campaign is really giving us the opportunity to have people come back to Pitt and uh, grow this community, bring their families, start a family. Both Pope and Froman say if you want to see growth and community, it starts right here. It would be a great example of one who used to live here and moved away, um, but I came back and it was because I missed it. I missed the small town. I missed my family. Um, I think we need housing. That's also part of my job. So that's something I'm really passionate about. Reporting in Pittsburgh, I'm Lonnie Walton, KOAM News. Well, Pittsburgh received a grant from the Department of Commerce to help fund the Love Kansas promotional program. You know, and I see this happen a lot. There's mm. the folks that are like, I'm going to get out of this town. I'm going to move right. away. And then I see a lot of them come back. Yeah. It doesn't take very long. Community, and family, there's so much there. And, and oh, yeah, The charm absolutely. of small towns. So. It, it, exactly. I mean, that's how it was. You know, in high school, I don't know how many of my friends were like, I'm getting out of this town. <laughs> I graduate. And, and they did. Sure. And then as they got here, they came back. Yeah. They came yep. right back, so that's what they're hoping to do, and maybe they'll be successful bringing a few more fo yeah. folks home to Pittsburgh. Home is where the heart is. Yes, it is. And speaking of Pittsburgh, take a look at this. Now, if it was sunnier, it'd look a lot nicer, but it still doesn't look that bad. We got cloudy skies there on our camera in downtown Pittsburgh. We also have cloudy skies in Joplin from our camera at 7th and Range Line, and we'll head south to the Modoc camera at 20th and Range Line. And well, if you were thinking it was going to look cloudy, you would be correct because that is is what it is cloudy. We still have dense fog. Grand Lake area grove back down to zero visibility out there. So that's parts of 69 riding right up along the edge of 60 and parts of I-44 even stretching back into Western McDonald County up to Anderson down to three miles visibility. So if you are traveling down in Delaware County and the immediately surrounding areas here, slow down. Give yourself time to get where you're going. Watch out for that dense fog out there. You do not want to be caught unawares, especially on Friday the 13th. Certainly do not. Skywatch Storm Tracker got a few showers in the southeast Kansas, northern parts of Missouri. All of this activity associated with what's left of Francine, which is well off over that way, and we'll continue to move well off over that way, and we'll start to pull clouds out of the area. In fact, Greenwood Elk, Chautauqua County is already seeing clouds starting to clear out, and as we go through the rest of the day, by noon, you can see a good portion of southeast Kansas, northeast Oklahoma is clear. And so from Chanute Parsons down to Vanita, this zone here and points 
west, you're going to be warmer than the rest of us today. You're looking at highs into the mid to upper 80s, whereas everyone east of that, it's going to take a little longer for those clouds to get out and be a little cooler. Highs capping out at about 80 degrees. Temperatures right now, it is 65 in Joplin, 66 over in Pittsburgh. And again, because the clouds are beginning to clear, a little cooler further west. 50, Sedan, Neotache, Independence, Nawada, and Parsons. And then the rest of us, for the most part, low to mid 60s out there. So again, from west to east, clouds gradually clearing. Maybe an isolated shower too on the Missouri side. Most of us highs about 80 degrees. Further west, about 85 to 88 degrees out there. We're going to have have everybody heating up into the weekend and we've got a cold front next week. We'll talk about all that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, Chris, thanks. Well, Vernon County Missouri officials are clarifying the rules when it comes to electioneering on Election Day. The clarification comes after complaints from voters during the August primary election when some voters claimed electioneer, electioneers rather harassed them as they were on their way to the polls. The county officials want to make sure that those who choose to electioneer know the laws that go along with it and ask that electioneers engage in the act respectfully. In the state of Missouri, no person engaging in the act of electioneering it can be within 25 feet of the entrance to a polling place. The Vernon County clerk says she wants all voters to be comfortable to go to the polls without being harassed. Just, you know, pay attention to what's going on around you. Um, but please get out and vote. It's one of those don't let the intimidation get you. In the state of Kansas, electioneering is not allowed within 250 feet of the entrance to a polling place. And in Oklahoma, that distance is 300 feet. One big issue animating a lot of voters in the upcoming election is abortion. KOEM got a chance to interview the candidates for the second district congressional seat in Kansas. Republican Derek Schmidt and Democrat Nancy Boyda. We asked whether they'd support a federal legislation that would either guarantee or restrict abortion rights. Well, I don't think there's, there, there is or should be a federal uh, ban on abortion. I am pro-life. And I do think that there are things the federal government should be doing uh, on, the, on the life issue. For example, I think we ought to make the Hyde Amendment permanent uh, so that you don't have public funding of abortion services. Uh, I think there ought not be those services provided at federal facilities, uh, that type of thing. Reinstate Roe v. Wade? Of course I would. Of course I would. And quite honestly, I can tell you from the left-hand side, even though I'm a moderate, it, it's inevitable that we don't understand how that can how the federal government can come in and make a decision for a woman regarding her health or just her ability to take care of a child uh, it, it is an anathema how anyone could believe that the federal government should be in our private lives we talked with the candidates about a wide range of other issues including immigration inflation and election security you can see those complete unedited interviews at koamnewsnow.com. And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, Dustin Luno from the Joplin Fire Department joins us this morning with an opportunity for you to become a firefighter. And later, I hear how one hairy creature may have been trying to catch some rays before hibernation. You're watching the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. Well, welcome back. Well, if you have dreams of becoming a firefighter, then you should look into the Joplin 2025 firefighting class. We have Fire Chief Dustin Luno with us this morning to share how you can get started. Welcome to you. Thank you so much for being with us, of course. So talk to me about the 2025 firefighting class. I know we were just talking that we can't believe that the we'll new year's you. just, a, you know, a few months away. Unbelievable. I'm still getting used to 2024, <laughs> right? right? Uh, but yeah, we're, we are looking right now uh, at taking applications mm. uh, and starting that process uh, so uh, we can start a 2025 Academy in January. So a uh, typical Academy takes about six months wow. yes. um, and we just graduated uh, just a few weeks ago uh, the 2024 Academy and and those guys are out there on the trucks and on the streets mm -hmm. and uh, protecting our citizenry and uh, it's time once again to start looking that direction. So if anybody is interested, absolutely, uh, please get your application in and I'll share the link with KOEM so it'll be on the site. Um, and also at city of Joplin, JoplinMo.org uh, is also the link. Absolutely. And so what does the uh, application process look like? And is there a deadline for applicants? 
Uh, right now, the deadline is is basically when we start the interview process sure. in October. Okay. So, uh, right now, the application process looks a lot like uh, getting online, submitting your application, and uh, then our staff will get a hold of you and start scheduling uh, the process. There is a, a entrance exam right. uh, that goes along with that, uh, and then from there, uh, there's a, a couple of interviews that work through the process, uh, and then once you're selected and there's a conditional job offer. Um, and you're off to the races yeah. and then you know, you're getting paid while you get trained uh, to become a firefighter with the city of Joplin. Absolutely. And so what are the types of, you know, qualities and, and, and qualifications that you're looking for in an applicant? That's a great question. Uh, you know, our applicants typically, uh, you know, they're they're local individuals mm. that, you know, they uh, they have they've come out of school, they've, they've gone into college or they, you know, they're they're in the workforce and they're looking for something to be able to give back, something that's, you yes. know, something that's rewarding, something that they can do to help their community. And those are the individuals mm. that, that, you know, we look at because it's such a great opportunity uh, to really give back to our community. Absolutely. And these start, as you mentioned, um, in January. And how, um, how long is the process? And just talk to me a little bit about what, you know, those who, who apply might expect to do while they're in training. Oh, the training is extremely in-depth. Mm -hmm. um, everything is trained at the Joplin Fire Department sure. to international standards. Right. So uh, we have an excellent group of instructors uh, and that are highly credentialed that teach everybody yes, and fantastic. test international standard. Um, so it's extremely in-depth. Mm -hmm. We cover a lot of material um, and uh, it, it's a fun time, but yeah. it is a lot of work. It's a lot of information in six months. Well, certainly. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning, Dustin. And as you mentioned, we will have all that information later on this morning on our website. That's koemnewsnow.com. Stick around. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 716 on this Friday morning. We are starting with a live look from the Modoc camera 20th and range line in Joplin. Folks getting their day underway with cloudy skies out there and it is cloudy for most of us. And uh, well, OK, there it came back. KDOT camera 69 Kansas Crossing also looking pretty good. We got the folks going and again, you don't see any sunlight breaching through the trees because, well, it is straight up cloudy out there. Skywatch Storm Tracker, a couple of stray showers here and there, not necessarily everything reaching the ground. Ground, but this activity now really into Bates County, very likely at least reaching the ground. We get some heavier activity also just to the west of Fort Scott. All of that still associated with what's left of Francine. Clouds stretch all the way to our western counties, but take a look. You can see the cloud cover is beginning to retreat a bit across Greenwood, Elk, and Chautauqua counties out there, and that will continue to be the case. Clouds will gradually clear from west to east. Now, as you saw in Skywatch Storm Tracker, they're already beginning to clear in our far western counties. By noon, a good portion of southeast Kansas into northeastern Oklahoma will be clearing out. Because of that, you guys will be a little warmer. You're going to get sunshine much earlier than the rest of us do. So we've talked about it, but again, uh, roughly Chinook, Parsons, Vanita, and to the west, you are looking at temperatures today, mid upper 80s. If you are east of that line, with the exclusion of parts of northeastern Oklahoma, you're going to be about 80 degrees. So there's that cloud line because it's a little bit of a rounded cloud line. That's why as you get into like Miami and Grove, also going to be warming up a bit today as well compared to your neighbors because of how that will curve around. Some folks in our far eastern counties, Monette, Cassville, Stockton, for example, will make about the mid 70s and upper 70s today. As we go overnight we'll have those partly cloudy skies out there and the uh, temperatures falling back into the 60s but for Saturday aside from maybe a shower or two it's really a less than 10 percent chance we're going to be partly cloudy out there and that's going to allow everybody to begin to heat up as we head into our Saturday we'll go partly cloudy Saturday night into Sunday we'll also be partly cloudy on our Sunday and temperatures once again will be rising above normal across the area and you see his windows picking up we'll get some gusty winds possible this weekend as well as we get through the rest of our Friday we had later into the day this is that haze this is that smoke from those wildfires it's been giving us the hazy skies the last several days it will start clearing from east to west so 
unfortunately, where it's still cloudy, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference. But as we get into our Saturday and the rest of this haze begins to clear out, we're going to see considerably clear skies as we head into our uh, Saturday afternoon across the area. Cloudy skies, our camera 7th and range line 65 in Joplin. Wind is calm and around the area because there's been some clearing taking place a little cooler to the west. So 50s in Sedan, the Odisha, Independence, Nawada and Parsons. Everyone else for the most part low to mid 60s. We're starting to see some upper 60s out there. So again, east of that line from Chanute, Parsons, Vanita, still looking at cloudy skies, maybe an isolated shower through about noon on the Missouri side. We'll make about 73 by 11 o'clock this morning. Again, highs for most of us today about 80. If you're a little further west, you'll be in the mid to upper 80s. All of us heating up this weekend, upper 80s. Then we get uh, really toasty, well above normal next week, low 90s. We have a cold front coming in Friday. Ahead of that, could get a few pop up showers and thunderstorms as the front rolls through Friday into Saturday. Could see a few more organized showers this weekend. Temperatures falling back into the low 80s. That's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. One hairy creature in California may have been trying to catch some rays before hibernation. Late last month, a South Lake Tahoe Beach was greeted by a bear who took a casual stroll. Shelby Riley reports. It was a big commotion. He caused a, a bear jam. Stephen Hindi works at the Tiki Bar near Boathouse on the Pier. He saw this bear strolling on the beach in South Lake Tahoe August 31st. I saw it moving around once it got closer to the pier. The bear appears to be minding its own business and taking a walk along the beach before taking a swim in the lake. This behavior is unusual. I mean, there are hundreds, if not thousands of bears in the Lake Tahoe area, and we don't typically see them on the beaches with people. Dr. Ray Wynn Grant, wildlife ecologist, says although this isn't the norm, warmer temperatures could cause a bear to be close to humans if it meant getting to a water source to cool off. Although this bear was acting very casually, maybe even in an amusing way, probably it was having a heightened stress response. Hindi says this isn't the first time he's seen a bear on that beach. It's happened before. I think now with social media, though, everybody has a cell phone, so it gets out really, really quickly. He says from what he saw and heard, that particular bear meant no harm. Although the bear was the star of the show that day, he says people tried their best to keep their distance. I'd like to think we gave him his space. He got to wander away, and it wasn't like people like got in front of him. Well, he looks like he was certainly enjoying his day at the beach. But as that lady said, could have also been a heightened stress response. Maybe he just wandered down there not really realizing what sure. he was getting into. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's a hot day. He just needed to cool off. Yeah. Can you blame the guy? I don't know. It's his home, too. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. Well, coming up, the Web City School District is helping its students succeed with a new tutoring service. And we'll have another check of your forecast. Talk about some warmer weather on the way when we come back. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 727. I'm Elise Snowy. Cherokee County, Kansas authorities yesterday charged a Web City, Missouri woman in the fentanyl overdose death of a Columbus, Kansas man. The suspect is 22 year old Michaela Marie Sellers. Authorities say she sold fentanyl to 27 year old Patrick Stevens on July 2nd and that Stevens died of an overdose the next morning. Now Sellers has been in custody since August 29th on unrelated charges, including child abuse. The county attorney yesterday charged her with distribution of controlled substances resulting in death. Authorities have arrested two suspects in the death of a two year old child at a home in Commerce, Oklahoma. The director of the public safety of the Quapaw Nation says 32 year old Daniel Allen Ash and 30 year old Amber Don Murphy face charges of child abuse and voluntary manslaughter. They were arrested Wednesday night and were in the Cherokee County, Kansas jail. One person is dead from a head on crash in Jasper County that caused a semi to roll over at about two yesterday morning. A wrong way I-49 a driver was reported near the Carthage Fairview exit. It was a pickup traveling north in the southbound lanes. A caller updating a 911 dispatcher followed for eight miles until a head on crash occurred near mile marker 60. 
The pickup collided with a tractor trailer, causing it to overturn. The pickup driver, 62 year old Lane Antonin of Basin, Kansas, died at the scene. The semi driver was transported to a hospital awake and alert. One man is dead after a trailer hauler trash rather hauler overturns near Jasper, Missouri. It happened Wednesday along Thorn Road near County Road 220 when an eastbound tractor trailer trash hauler crashed overturning. The driver Kim Melvin of Joplin died at the scene. Another man in the truck, Daryl Taylor of Webb City, suffered serious injuries. Now here's Chris with a quick look at your forecast. Cloudy start to the day for most of us out there. You can see that from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. We've got the clouds, kids getting ready for school, folks heading off to work on this Friday, and we've got cloudy skies also from our camera at 7th and Range Line in Joplin. We'll head a little further south of that to the Modoc camera 20th and Range Line. Again, folks are in motion. That's good. And the skies are again quite cloudy out there. We still have some fog, but it is beginning to let up. We've had it around the Grand Lake area virtually every morning this week, but this morning we were down to almost uh, zero visibility around Grove. Still have some patchy fog around Iola as well. Visibility just under six miles up there, so just watch out for that here and there. A couple of stray showers out there, uh, some heavier type rain or at least some moderate rain over into Bates County and some uh, showers just to the west of Fort Scott. All of that still associated with what's left of Francine off to our east and as we go through the day and already happening further west clouds begin to clear across the area from west to east as Francine's remnants move on out of the region and so because of that Chinook, Parsons, Vanita, and into Miami and Grove points west of that. You're going to be a little warmer. You're talking highs mid upper 80s out there. But if you are east of that point, we're looking at highs right around 80 for most of you. But Stockton, Monette, Mount Vernon, Cassville, right along the eastern edges of our viewing area, very likely only make the upper 70s today as clouds gradually clear out. 65, both Joplin and Pittsburgh right now as we get this Friday underway. And again, because clouds are clearing a bit, a little cooler out to the west, 50s in Sedan, Neotache, Independence, Nawada, and Parsons. Everybody else, for the most part, low to mid 60s to get this day underway. So again, gradual clearing from west to east. We'll start to go partly cloudy by the evening and overnight hours. Most of us, highs right around 80. A little further west, a little warmer, talking mid to upper 80s out there. All of us heating up as we head into the weekend, and we've got some rain chances next week. Look at all those details in the full forecast in just a few more minutes. Elise? Chris, thanks. The Webb City School District is helping its students succeed by providing on-demand tutoring. Now, the tutoring service through paper will offer students 24-7 tutoring. The service is offered in various languages to accommodate all students, including international ones. It gives them the capability if they are doing homework, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night, that they have someone at their fingertips who can help them if they're struggling with a problem or don't understand a concept. The newest development to the tutoring service is the career and college guidance feature. Well, Ozark Christian College students got together yesterday, but not to go to class. More than 550 students and staff went across Joplin as part of the effort they call Serve Our City. Volunteers helped work with things such as yard work, painting, and cleaning. And organizers say they were excited to be able to encourage others to serve their community are aiming to serve the Lord and it's nice to just be able to come out here and share. We have people that have needs out here and just to be able to come out here and meet those needs and just find joy in being able to serve the Lord. Because whenever you think of that, you think of big missionaries that go across seas and stuff, but there's ministries right here in town that need just as much help as across seas. So getting to come here and just share in them and the needs they have and just finding joy in serving the Lord and the needs they need. Volunteers worked at 43 locations in the community. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Shannon Becker joins us in the studio this morning with his big three news stories of the week. Welcome back. We've got Shannon Becker in the studio with his big three news stories of the week. Good morning to you and happy Friday the 13th. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I know, yeah. Let's take a look at the big three stories this week. KOAM News Now. A uh, tragic story mm. developed overnight. Yes. Late Wednesday into Thursday, a wrong way driver caused a fatal crash. It was in Carthage. It, it, the, the crazy thing about it, it traveled eight miles wrong way on I-49. Wow. Uh, and someone was driving in the other lane. So 
the pickup truck was traveling north in the southbound lanes and there was another yes. vehicle going north in the northbound lanes and we're trying to get the driver's attention mm -hmm. for about eight miles. Wow. Tragically, wow. it ended with a head on collision and the driver died. More details mm -hmm. on our website, KOAM News Now. Our number two story, Joplin News First. Well, this is a little bit lighter, right? Yes. Well, not necessarily light, it's uh, 1,200 mm -hmm. pounds. Now they call these muffler men. Back in the right. 60s, they would like hold different items, these big advertisements that gas stations or muffler stores across the U United Incredible. States. Yeah. Most likely like U uh, US 66 is what people sure. are thinking of Route yeah. 66. So this is a big A they're calling him, a Texaco man. He's in Galena now. Here he is. He's actually not a, an original. He was made, you know, with oh, the okay. molds, right. I guess you could say. But they're in the likeness of Al, who owns the Gearhead Curio. So you have to stop by and check it out in For Galena. Sure. Our number one story, KOEM News Now. Uh, this was last week. In fact, Friday, a car drove into the mm -hmm. nail salon. Yes. <laughs> General, do you get your nails done there? No, I, not me. <laughs> I, I kept calling it rock nails because there's just a star. I, right. I'm not that savvy. Everybody's making fun of me, but the SUV, nobody it's was injured, but wow, look at that. Nobody was injured inside. Nobody was injured outside. Uh, just happened to accidentally hit the gas instead of the brake. Chop them fire department job of police taking were there. that column out <laughs> yeah too. the column was really decorative though okay it was just like a piece sure. of metal <laughs> so right. that was good to know because <laughs> i thought that huge column was gonna fall but Not i mean terrible damage there. yep it happens it yeah. happens and then our bonus story of the week this is what a lot of people have been uh concerned about this mm. round about their building right. but it's an important part of the enterprise industrial park that is shared by web city and joplin so this is Hall Street, the north section of the roundabout at Zora and Duquesne is mm. now closed. They're going to build a, a new gas station. Take a break. We'll be there on the northwest corner. Oh, so fantastic. it'll be more appropriate for these huge trucks driving oh, through that absolutely. area. Uh, so safer for everyone involved. So that's our bonus story of the week. The KOEM News Now. Big three. There you go. There we go. Thank you so much. I was, I was, I was going to fade out and disappear like a ghost, oh. you know, but well, our, our graphics aren't working as well as I, you know, well, that was yesterday, but anyway. There you go. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Yeah, exactly. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Shannon. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News. 740 now on this Friday morning. Starting with Skywatch Storm Tracker. Got a few showers uh, west of Fort Scott, northwest of Pittsburgh, and into Bates County, just north of Nevada as well. Uh, not much out there. These few showers we have are what's left, uh, or part of what's left of Francine. And then the cloud cover extending all the way to the western edges of our viewing area. But as you can see in the loop here, they continue to begin to shove on off to the east. So that's what's going to happen today. We'll have those clouds continue to clear. So by noon, a good portion of southeast Kansas in the northeastern Oklahoma will start to clear out. Because of that, you see the kind of curved edge to these clouds here. If you are along this line, Chinook Parsons, Miami Grove, you're going to be warmer than everyone to the east. So because we have such a broad coverage area, we can't make 50 different graphics or take all day to get through them. But I can tell you if you are along this zone and west, you are looking at highs today into the mid to upper 80s. If you are along that zone to the east, you are looking at highs. Most of you about 80 degrees, but some of our far eastern communities, Stockton, Monette, Cassville, Mount Vernon may only make it to the upper 70s because that will be the last areas that the clouds begin to clear out. Be partly cloudy overnight, maybe one shower or two on our Saturday in the morning. Otherwise, majority of us dry. It's really less than 10% chance and we'll start to have a much clearer sky. Still partly cloudy, but a little little more sunshine, a lot less clouds than what we've been seeing. And that will repeat the process again on Sunday with more of us through the weekend starting to heat up. So even though today this zone is going to be warm, Everybody will be warm as we head into the weekend. And as we head down the road today from east to west, this haze, that's what this is, the smoke tracker from the fires out west is going to begin to clear out across the area. And as we get into our Saturday, once we have those partly cloudy skies, the skies will look a little bluer out there because we won't be having to deal with as much of that haze as we have been uh, the last several days here as we head into this weekend. So expect some clearer skies. Even though it'll be partly cloudy, you'll see a little more blue out there. Seventh and range line. We are mostly cloudy. You can see it's a little bit of clearing over Joplin, but not much. 65 winds are calm and around the region. Temperatures not doing too bad where there's been some clearing. It's a little cooler. 50s in Sedan, Neotache, Independence, Nawada and Parsons. The rest of us for the most part, low to mid 60s to get this day started. So again, depending on where you are, some of you will be cloudy through the morning 
in that zone into the west. You'll start seeing the clearing and al already seeing the clearing through the morning. Maybe an isolated shower or two on the Missouri side. Low 70s by 11 o'clock out west about 80 by 11. Most of us highs right around 80. The farther west you are mid upper 80s a little further east. We're talking upper 70s. So smattering of temperatures out there, but uh, still not bad except the folks further west. It's going to be a little above normal out there. Partly cloudy skies through the evening into the overnight back down to the low to mid 60s. All of us heating up though as we head into the weekend. Upper 80s getting close to 90 by Sunday. We've got low 90s all the way through next Friday and we have a cold front approaching late Friday into Saturday. Now ahead of it, it's going to draw in some moisture. Could give us an opportunity not only to be muggy but also for some pop up showers and thunderstorms Wednesday through Friday as that frontal boundary makes its way through. It'll drop our temperatures to more reasonable levels low 80s through the weekend. It'll also bring us some slightly more beneficial rain chances across the area as well. That's check your forecast. We're going to send it over to Lease now with Consumer Watch. All right, thanks. Well, grocery chain Aldi is raising its starting pay for employees. Aldi says the new starting wage will be $18 an hour for workers in their stores and $23 an hour for warehouse workers. Employees who work at least 30 hours a week will also have access to health insurance and paid time off. Aldi is in the midst of a hiring surge amid continued growth. It says it's looking to hire more than 13,000 employees for new store openings and to prepare for the holiday season. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration Chief Mike Whitaker is set to testify this month during a hearing on the Boeing probe. Now, Whitaker will go before a Senate Homeland Security Subcommittee on September 25th. The company has faced several issues, including the January 5th incident where an Alaska air flight door plug blew out. And for months, federal investigators have been probing whether Boeing employees failed to perform some quality inspections on its 787 jets. Now, back in June, the FAA chair testified to another Senate committee saying his agency is partly responsible for safety problems at Boeing. The FAA says it's holding Boeing accountable through aggressive oversight. Well, the Smartmatic defamation case against Newsmax is headed to trial this month. This was decided by Delaware Superior Court Judge Eric Davis on Thursday when he rejected the right wing news outlets attempt to shut it down altogether. The case is brought by the voting technology company Smartmatic. Davis says that Newsmax reported on allegations regarding the election and Smartmatic, but a jury will decide if it was done so with a reckless disregard for the truth. Now, the trial is set to begin September 30th. Newsmax's defense is that it was merely reporting on Trump's claims about the election and not endorsing them. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. Wildfires continue to burn in Southern California. Further north in the state, technology has been developed to help stop fires from spreading. Fox's Joey Horta reports. It looks like something out of a science fiction movie. A new automated machine called the BurnBot. Designed in South San Francisco, BurnBot is the brainchild of Dr. Walid Haddad. I came to the realization that rather than trying to extinguish, it's better to prevent fires from starting and control where they can and can't go. The burn bot's purpose, creating fire breaks with prescribed burns in wildfire prone areas to prevent flames from spreading. The team demonstrated what it could do Tuesday in a field of dry grass next to PG&E's Martinez substation. Yeah, the burn bot is cool. So if we have defensible lines around assets like the substation here, then it's much less likely to be threatened by a direct fire. Here's how it works. The operator uses a remote control to fire up the diesel powered tractor, which pulls the BurnBot trailer. BurnBot carries propane torches to eliminate dry grass, 
sprays water on the charred debris left in its path, and then uses rollers to smother whatever's left. But does it take away firefighting jobs? That's a question the designers keep getting asked. I think there's, uh, there's just millions of acres in California that need to be burned safely to mitigate this wildfire problem. But the designer says BurnBot does do the job of dozens of hand crews freeing up manpower while keeping firefighters out of danger and protecting homes and lives. The goal long term is to really help mitigate destructive wildfires by scaling the use of good fire with our technology. With wildfires scorching more than 900,000 acres across California this year, this cutting edge technology is just another tool to help firefighters manage an age old problem. Well, the burn bonds designer says the machine creates little smoke compared to an open burn. The company is in saying how much it costs to hire the burn bot. It, it's an interesting, interesting sure. thing for yeah. sure. Um, and, and, you know, out there that it's it's building that barrier, though, that helps right. to stop a, a spread. You know, it, somebody else looking at that, like, well, why would you start a fire to stop sure. a fire? But out there, it, it does make a difference. You can get that line going. So hopefully Absolutely. it's helpful yeah. for some of those situations. And as for us, we have a few isolated showers out there. You can see on the Skywatch Storm Tracker, not everything is reaching the ground, but uh, Hurricane Francine, or what's left of her, continues to turn off to our east. And as she pushes out of here, clouds will continue to retreat as they are doing so. Right now, parts of uh, Elk, Chautauqua, Greenwood counties. Because of that, again, Again, this parallel, this line here, Grove, Miami, Parson, Chanute, right here and to the west. You're looking at highs today into the mid to upper 80s. If you are to the east of that point, you're looking at highs right around 80 degrees and a little further east may only make the upper 70s today. Now, all of us will start to heat up as we head into the weekend. We'll have partly cloudy skies on our Saturday. Temperatures climbing into the upper 80s for most of us out there. And then that process will repeat again on Sunday. Partly cloudy skies and temperatures once again will start climbing above normal. And tomorrow starts the trend of above normal temperatures temperatures for everybody. Smoke tracker those we go through today from east to west. We're going to start to see that smoke from those wildfires begin to clear out, which means as we head into our Saturday, even though we'll have partly cloudy skies uh, in between spaces, we're going to have much bluer looking skies as we see that haze begin to clear out of the area. We have another look at your forecast. Talk about the weekend and the heat that's on the way, as well as the news you need to know right after this. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Cherokee County, Kansas authorities charged a Webb City, Missouri woman in the fentanyl overdose death of a Columbus, Kansas man. The suspect is 22-year-old Michaela Marie Sellers. Authorities say she sold fentanyl to 27-year-old Patrick Stevens on July 2nd and that Stevens died of an overdose the next morning. Sellers has been in custody since August 29th on unrelated charges, including child abuse. The county attorney yesterday charged her with distribution of controlled substances resulting in death. Authorities have arrested two suspects in the death of a two-year-old child at a home in Commerce, Oklahoma. The director of the public safety of the Quapaw Nation says 32-year-old Daniel Allen Ash and 30-year-old Amber Dawn Murphy face charges of child abuse and voluntary manslaughter. Now, they were arrested Wednesday night and were in the Cherokee County, Kansas jail. Well, Kansas is a launching a campaign called Love Kansas, which hopes to draw in new residents to the state. Some local people hope the effort could benefit Pittsburgh specifically. The campaign highlights a system called the Boomerang Effect, where those with previous ties to the Sunflower State come back home. Participants received a grant from the Kansas Department of Convert. And we've got a warm day out there. Gradual clearing taking place. Again, if you are further west, highs mid upper 80s. Most of us looking at right around 80 degrees out there. Partly cloudy skies through the evening and overnight as those clouds continue to back out of here and will fall back into the low to mid 60s. All of us heating up through the weekend. Upper 80s near 90 by Sunday. Low 90s through at least next Friday. Got a cold front approaching toward the end of next week. Drawing some moisture ahead of it. Maybe some pop up storms Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And then a few additional showers. Maybe a couple of thunderstorms as we head into next weekend and temperatures falling back to more seasonable levels into the low 80s. Alrighty. 
Well, who doesn't like saving some money? Friday the 13th is bringing some good luck with some special deals. Krispy Kreme is helping customers get through the unlucky day today with a dozen glazed donuts for 13 cents. Wendy's will celebrate the unfortunate day with free hot and crispy fries of any size. I know where I'm going after yeah. for rewards members who order in the app. Wendy's customers can also get a small frosty for one dollar until the end of the month. And there are people who will dip those fries into the frosties. Now, I've never done that. But oh, really? No, you have. You have never seen that. No, never I've heard done it. Oh, oh, it's oh, quite oh, good. I haven't done it in years, but I liked it when I did it. I have never fries, ice cream. Who doesn't it does want not that? seem like a good combination <laughs> to me, but hey, to each there, we all have our own unique tastes and maybe today's a good day to explore those yes. tastes. And we want to thank you so much for letting us put the good into your Friday the 13th. We'll be back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.